Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is figure out if the problem asks you for the velocity and acceleration. Okay, and typically such problems, you'll be given velocity of one point and told to find the velocity of another point or acceleration of one point is given, find the acceleration of other point. If that's the case and there's no mass inertia given to you, it's clearly a kinematics problem. It's from chapter 12 and 16 and you know what to, what to do. You know the formulas. They're in the formula sheet. So that's the first thing you want to check. If you're asked to find a velocity when the, move, when the object moves a certain distance, so velocity is a function of distance. V as a function of x or omega as a function of theta, then what you want to do is it's probably from 14 and 18, which is you got to apply the principle of uh, work and energy. Okay, uh, in such problems, you'll see that typically the external force moment, which is applied to the body, becomes is usually given as a function of distance and angle. And, and actually, I have some examples where this actually illustrates this particular point, which is if that's the case, then it's easy to use a uh, principle of conservation of work and energy. If not, then uh, you might have to use uh, equations of work and energy. So uh, I have an example today which will specifically emphasize this. So if you thought it was too confusing, too hard, then I will illustrate this. Uh, if you're asked to find velocity after a certain time, so V as a function of time or omega as a function of time, then I would recommend using principle of impulse and momentum. That is, this is something which covered in the latest chapters, 15 and 19. Okay, again, in this problem, typically you will see that you're given external forces and moments as a function of time. Okay, if they're not function of time, then you'll have to use uh, F equals MA just like this one. Okay? If this was not clear, again, I have an example today which will illustrate what I mean by that. So if, if 1, 2, 3 doesn't apply, then uh, you can be sure that it is to be solved using F equals MA. Okay? Uh, if, if you are confused with the problem, uh, if you are given masses accelerations, the so first thing is to rule out um, Kinematics. If it's not a kinematics problem, it involves mass inertia. Then, uh, then, and if you're still confused which principle to apply, I can tell you with certainty that you can always apply it because they mean and solve the problem no matter what. Just that sometimes it becomes hard, the math becomes lengthy, and sometimes it's not possible to find an analytical solution if you use this, especially the pendulum problems. Uh, but nevertheless, you should try to use this because there will be partial points for. Uh, writing questions. And when, when I grade a question like this, I like to see you putting up equations. You do fx equals mass and acceleration, x direction, that equation down. Do the same thing in y. Do the same for the uh, moment equation. If you have an equation, you probably get a lot of points. Uh, so you are, you want to try to maximize partial credit. I know that you want to get the final answer, get full points, but if you want to maximize your partial credit, then you want to draw free body diagrams, one, and write all the equations clearly. Right? Write f equals ma and then show what f equals ma is for that particular free body diagram. Same for moments. Okay, so the other things which you want, you can you can read about. Uh, uh, this is specifically about what coordinate frame. So another problem which people find is given a problem, how do you choose? How do you know which coordinate frame to use? Right? And there are really three options: rectangular, uh, uh, polar, r theta, and then there's uh, normal tangential okay and uh, here is how you do that if for problems where you're given typically the curve is given r is a function of theta you know it's circular um, if you're asked to find tangential normal forces typically you should use the curvilinear coordinates and if not then use the cartesian coordinates Okay, if, the, if the particle is going in circles, then it's usually you can use either of them, the NT coordinates or the R theta coordinates. Actually, those coordinates actually line up. So they have the same, uh, they, are, they actually are the same, you, you get the same formulas if you apply uh, those two coordinates. That is, the formula for acceleration in R theta and acceleration formula in curvilinear coordinates is the same when things are moving in circles because those, those uh, coordinate frames are uh, lined up. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is essentially uh, take these, these things that I wrote down here 
and try to show you how you can go about solving a problem in the exam. How do you apply what I've written down here? Okay, so this is how you see a problem. You will not know which section is from. So the force F acting on uh, acting in the constant direction on the 20 kilogram mass has a magnitude which varies with position. So F is a function of position. Determine how far the block must slide before its velocity becomes 15 meters per second. When S equals zero, the block is moving to the right at uh, V equals six meters per second. So you're given that when S equals zero, V is six meters per second. You got to find S before its velocity becomes 15 meters per second. You also told that the coefficient of friction, mu k, is 0.3. Okay, so once you uh, understood the question, which is essentially finding the distance it moves before its velocity is uh, 15 meters per second, then you want to go back to this. Okay. Will not provide you this in the exam, but uh, as you solve problems, you probably know how to apply this. Uh, so the first question is, uh, is it a kinematics problem? And the hint here is, uh, it's not a kinematics problem because you're given the mass, right? Uh, you're given a force, you're given the mass, so it's not a kinematics problem. Okay, so then the next step is to ask yourself, uh, if it's not a kinematics problem, it's a kinetics problem, uh, is there a faster way to do it than F equals MA? So, Point 0.2 and point 0.3 if says that if you are trying to find velocity as a function of distance, then you've got to use principle of work energy or conservation. If, if f is a function of, uh, if you're asked to find v as a function of t, then you want to use momentum. So in this case, we can see that you're told to find s and the v is given. So it's clearly a problem where you're better off applying either the principle of work or uh, conservation of energy. You've got to figure out which of the two you're going to apply, but that's where it's, it's probably from a uh, chapter which talks about uh, principle of work energy and uh, conservation. Right? So in this case, uh, now you're going to choose between the two, conservation and uh, principle of work energy. In this case, uh, are there non-conservative forces? Friction is a non-conservative force. So if there's a non-conservative force, then you want to use principle of work energy. Right. Energy is not conserved in this case. So I would use principle of work energy. Before I do that, uh, I would highly recommend drawing a free body diagram, even if you're not asked to find one, uh, draw one, because that has partial credit. So let's draw a free body diagram of the mass. There's F. There's a friction force. Uh, and then there is a normal force. MG. So we decided we're going to use principle of work energy. Okay, which says that T1 plus U12 is T2. So initial kinetic energy is half mv1 square uh, plus the work done by all the external forces. So uh, we are interested in this, this, in this equation in the, you can write this, by the way, this equation in, well, uh, my bad. So it's a scalar equation, right? So we could write the total energy. So the total work done is going to be the net force, which is F minus F external, sorry, F minus F friction, dS, so I need to integrate from S1 to S2 equals uh, the final kinetic energy. Okay, now I see that I need to find FF. So I need to actually invoke F equals MA. Otherwise I will not be able to find FF. So uh, FF is mu times N. And I know that from FY equals MAY I get uh, n equals mg, n minus, sorry, n minus mg 
equals 0. So if I take this and shove it in here, I get ff is mu k times mg. So I'm going to take this and put it in here. So s1 is 0, right? s is unknown, so I'll write it as s. f is given to be 50 s uh, square root of s, so 50 square root of s, if we just write it as s raised to half minus mu k m g times t s equals half m v2 square. So integral of s raised to ha uh, half is 3 divided by 2, 3 divided by 2, s0 minus mu k mg. That's a constant, so it's, only, it's going to be simply s, the integral of ds equals half mv2 squared. So in this equation, uh, v1 is given, uh, v2 is given, uh, s is the unknown. S is unknown. This, yeah, there is no T2 here. You mean S. So I would write it like this. So uh, this is 100 divided by 3. Right? So in this case, uh, everything but S is, everything but S is given, right? So you need to solve for S. Now, it turns out that this is not uh, trivial to solve using a calculator because you're going to get S cube and your calculator will only solve quadratic, right? Okay, so an exam will probably not give you a, uh, an equation like this. The way we could potentially give you this equation is Instead of giving you V2 and asking you to pass out for S, in the exam, this question, we will give you S and get it to find V2 because then it becomes the square root of that. So don't worry about the math. You have to follow. I, I actually have not, uh, uh, I, I, you cannot solve it. You may be able to solve it analytically, but there's no guarantee you will solve it analytically. Do not expect it to know how to solve S2. Plus my S2 is S2. Uh, so uh, don't worry about that. I just wanted to put this part so that I illustrate how to solve it. That is how to set up the equation. That was a homework problem. Was a homework problem? Okay. I don't seem to have the answer here. Huh. I don't seem to have the answer. Then write it down. Uh, maybe try to get uh, solve it and put it later on. Uh, but but a question like this, if you thought, if you blanked out and you did not know how to solve this using Prince not know that principle of work energy is the right way to do it, uh, I can tell you that you can always use f equals ma and solve it. So an alternate way, is to use f equals ma, which gives me uh, the net net force right, equals mass times uh, acceleration, which is m now, when you want to find V as a function of distance, you want to put V dV dS. So when you do this, you get uh, F, which is 50 S is to half minus mu kmg. Right? Uh, I'm going to move this dS to the other side. Is M V dV. So when you integrate this, S to 0, V to Z, v, V2 to V1, 
should actually get the same as expression as this. Like you can see that this is the same as that. And then when you integrate this, you get half m v1 square minus v2 square minus v1 square, which is right there. You get the same expression if you find it. So in this case, it turns out that it's equally easy to solve it using x equals m a. Okay, so here is a, a well. Any questions on this? Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to change this question slightly. Uh, it's the same question, but what I've done now is. No, we will not tell you. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, we've thought about that. Uh, we will not tell you which method because that's giving away how to solve it. Uh, sometimes if you think that one of the methods is too hard, it's going to yield. So sometimes when you use f equals m, it takes a lot of time to solve it. You're going to waste a lot of time. You might give a hint saying that uh, use this method. But most of the time, we expect you to figure out yourself. That's one of the skills we want you to acquire in this course. Uh, know what to apply. You will get points, irrespective of how you, if you, as long as you use the right principle, which is in this case, there are two principles. You could use either one, and let's say that you went, you couldn't solve the full thing using f equals m, you still get partial credit for that. In fact, if, even if we say that you want to solve it using method x, but you use method y, as long as method y is a applicable method, I think, I, I'm pretty sure you'll get extra credit. It's not like, just because we gave you a hint doesn't mean that you got to use the hint. Yes, okay. that's been my experience. There should be probably a question or two where the opposite is true, but my experience has been all the problems solved so far. It's always a shortcut. It's easier to use that. Okay, so this is the same. Uh, it's not the same problem. It's the same figure, uh, same force. So F is acting on a 20 kg mass. Uh, this is not true. I'm going to eliminate this. Actually, the force I've given you is not a function of S. Now it's a function of time. Okay. So determine uh, the time. So I'm asking you to find the time. The block must slide before its velocity becomes 15 meters per second. So instead of giving you distances, I've given you time. So at t equals 0, v equals 6 meters per second. Uh, you got to find the time when v equals 15 meters per second. So in the earlier problem, right here, I gave you, well, you're given the velocities, but you are told the velocity at those different uh, distances. You are told to find the distance when the velocity becomes 15 meters per second. In this case, the question is, uh, you are asked to find the time when the velocity is 15 meters per second. Okay. So if you follow that same recipe again, uh, since there is a mass involved, this is clearly not a kinematics problem. right? Uh, then you ask yourself, are you asked to find velocity as a function of distance? Well, no. So go to the next part, which is, uh, is velocity to be found as a function of time? That's what it is. So we've got to use principle of um, impulse momentum in this case. There was no mass in the universe. Uh, in this case, I don't think how you can use kinematics. Uh, the only way you can use, this problem could be a kinematics problem is I tell you specifically that that block is moving with an acceleration given by this formula. So if I give you the acceleration of that mass, then you can just take the acceleration formula dv dt and integrate that to find the velocity. In this case, you have to use f equals ma, if you're using f equals ma, that is, to find the acceleration first and then integrate that to find velocity. Uh, yeah, so the 
we will solve it using principle of impulse momentum, but the other way to solve this is if you f equals ma and find the acceleration in the x direction. Once you find the acceleration, then use the formula a equals dv dt and integrate that to find the velocity when the time the time when the velocity is 15 meters per second. So I, I can do that also. Let me just uh, do it both ways. So uh, fbd is this. Uh, we've seen that we already found out that mu k n is mu k mg. Uh, we've already decided that we're going to go for a principle of Oh, by the way, I forgot to emphasize this. So, when, when you're solving problems using principle of impulse momentum, actually there are, there are two principles. There's one is principle of impulse and momentum. Well, and the other one is conservation of momentum, right? So, the question is which, which do you apply? In this case, since there's an external force, you want to use the principle of impulse and momentum. You use the conservation of momentum only when uh, the net force is zero or the... Or, uh, Either there is no external force or the total external force somehow comes out to be zero. For example, when two particles collide, that's the case when if you look at the free body diagram of the entire system, the net forces which act are internal and they are going to cancel out. And so you can use the conservation of momentum. So principle of momentum says that is it I think it's L M V one F D T right uh, T one T two equals M V two okay so M V one plus F is F minus F FS DT equals MV2. So MV1 plus uh, F is 50 T raised to half minus mu K MG. So the initial time is zero, so I'm going to put that, and the final time is t is m v two. I forgot the dt. So m v one plus fifty t raised to three by two to minus mu k m g t equals m v two. So the only unknown here is the time v2 is known v1 is known mu k mg everything is known okay again this is a problem where such a problem will well, that turns out that you're going to solve tq my question was tq you're not expecting to know this so don't worry about the math you will probably uh, find some uh, simpler ports here that you don't have to deal with tq but even if you find such a problem you got to uh, you need to set it up. Uh, I don't have an answer for T. T. Oh, I did not solve it. So if you if you expand this out, you get 10 T 3 raised to 2 minus 18 T minus 27 equals 0. This needs to be solved numerically. Uh, you'll be doing a course called numerical methods some point of time where you will actually solve these problems using MATLAB. Uh, but for this course, you're not expecting. You know, if you write, if, if you write that in the exam, that final thing, if it accidentally gives such a question, which you want, you, it's absolutely fine if you keep it in this form. You say that it is on numerical. If it's quadratic, however, you should solve it. But if it's cubic, it's okay to just write it, write that down. You don't expect to know how to solve a cubic problem. Oh. 
the equation which is of that form. Uh, okay. Uh, you could also use f equals m a. Summation f equals m a. So the net force is f minus f f equals mass times acceleration. So f is 50 t raised to half minus mu k m g. And then of the various forms of acceleration, there are two formulas, right? a is dv dt and a is v dv ds. Uh, you, you, got, you have an option to choose which one do you want. Now, in this case, since you are, everything here is in terms of time, you want to use e v dt. For the previous problem, this was 50 s is to half. Since this is a function of s, I used v, a equals v dv dt type of integral. So this is, we'll write it as dv dt. 0 to t. 50 t raised to half minus mu k m g d t equals m d v v1 to v2. So you can see that this expression when you integrate this will come out same as this. Right? Or better would be if you can see it here, this is the force, is exactly the same thing here, and then in this integral is simply m v2 minus v1, right, which is here and here. So it, gives, it gives you the same formula basically, um, just that in the first method you don't have to do this integral. You got to do that one. You don't have to do this one. So this is a problem where both methods give you, uh, well, they give you the identical formulas. They should, but either way is easy, easy to easy to do. There's no big advantage you gain by using the principle of impulse momentum. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, now let's. Uh, so here's probably another simpler problem, but shows uh, application of those principles. So the disc which has a mass of 20 kilograms is subjected to a couple m which is given as 2 theta plus 4 where theta is in radians. If it starts from rest, so theta dot or angular speed omega is 0 when theta is 0 find the angular velocity when theta is 2 pi. I believe I did this question in class. Uh, and I think I solved it using f equals, uh, in this case, you can't use f equals m, but you use the moment about O. Right, so that's what I'm getting to. So again, if you go through our that uh, algorithm, uh, you can see you're asked to find, well, there's a mass given to you, so it's not a kinematics problem. Then you can go through and ask yourself what principle to apply uh, from this three, the first thing we would ask is omegas a function of theta, it is, right? So uh, since that's the case, you can either apply principle of work energy or conservation of uh, energy, but since there's an external force M, you should not apply the conservation of energy because M is non-conservative. So you want to use principle of work energy in this case. Two revolutions. <clears throat> Would that be four? Yeah, two revolutions is not bad. Two times two pi. Four pi. The FPD is this. Uh, it's not clear if it's in the vertical plane or horizontal plane. If you like, you can put mg, just assuming that this thing is in the vertical plane. But if it's in the horizontal plane, there's no mg, I think. Uh, it doesn't really matter here because uh, we're going to take moments about O. So 
you can apply principle of uh, work energy yes i'll do that absolutely that is using uh, the f equals ma equivalent in the rotational world which is the net mom the net external torque is equal to i alpha this is rotation about a fixed axis so i'll do that in a bit the t1 plus u12 is t2 uh, the t1 is the the kinetic energy now another thing you want to note is that this is a problem of a rigid body it's not a particle right because a particle doesn't have rotations there's nothing like a rotation for a particle uh, while a rigid body does have rotation so uh, we are interested in the total energy this is rotation about again within uh, within the energies for a rigid body there are three cases there's translation only there's rotation about fixed axis and gen there's general planar motion this is not translating uh, is it rotation about fixed axis it is it's about oh so we need to find uh, how the kinetic energy is i o omega square and this will be i o omega 2 square uh, it turns out that the inertia for a disk is m r square divided by 2 and then the work done is going to be m d theta from theta 0 to 4 pi okay so inertia is known because i know the mass i know the radius uh initial speed is given it's simply zero the final speed is the unknown uh theta is no you can integrate this right so omega 2 is known this is going to be one equation one unknown and you can solve for omega 2 omega 2 comes out to be 21.5 radians per second okay so this is just one one of the two ways to do it the other way to do it is to recognize that uh, you could use f equals ma well in this world uh, you can also use the the moment equation right it's more useful to use the moment equation because f equals ma will give me these forces i'm not interested in those forces so I'm going to use uh, alternate method is equation of motion It says that the moment about O is so. Remember that formula. There is uh, there are three cases, right? it could be zero if this translation if it's fixed axis it's simply i o alpha and if it's general planar motion it's i o alpha plus r cross mg mag so this is uh, motion about fixed axis so you're going to get all this one on the final uh there's a formula sheet in the term exam for remember and we're going to give you that sheet whatever is there on the sheet i think that sheet comes from the last page of the textbook which has that formula so you have the textbook in front of you it should be there uh, should be the last page i think isn't it there yeah what the question yeah in the in the revolutions i know it's uh, it's the pi yeah that's one of the ways to maybe times two but uh, why is it not two pi r why are we not taking it down the radius of it so think of the units so the units of of rotation is radians so if you take 2 pi r that's not consistent units so it's going to have 2 pi r as units of what meters that doesn't make sense 
so sometimes uh, it's good to think of units. Okay, so the moment is two theta plus four. Inertia is half m. I'm just write it as I O alpha. Okay. Uh, again, now for alpha, I have two options. I could use d omega d t, or I could use omega d omega d theta. Right. This is the an the analogous formula in uh, the alpha world. Remember, I written down earlier a equals d d t and a equals d d d s. This is the same formula, but written in the rot rotary world. So, of these two formulas, which formula should I use for alpha? What's the answer with this one? The yeah, I would do this one because eventually I uh, have theta here. If this was a function of time, I would have used this one. So, I O omega d omega d theta, and so I get 2 theta plus 4 d theta 0 to 4 pi equals d omega. And if you notice carefully, this actually gives you the same formula as this when integrated. So it's not terribly different or difficult to use this. Uh, they both give nearly the same answer, but it's not too much work to use the alternate method. Okay, is this clear? Questions? How do you know when we use the S equal in like time to that? You, it always works. S equals MA, irrespective of what the question is, you can use S equals MA to work. But the question is, would you be able to solve it by pencil paper? That's debatable. Sometimes there are questions, especially the pendulum problems. If you do not use F, if you do not use one of the principles, you will find it very hard to uh, integrate the equations. You might have an integral which is, uh, I think it is, uh, for a pendulum, I think you get, I forget it, but for typically for those, some questions, you cannot integrate uh, by hand. You need to use a numerical uh, tool to, uh, like MATLAB to do that. So you will get, set up the right equations, just that you will not be able to get the right answer. Or some it will be a lot of steps. Okay, so this is the same figure but uh, slightly slightly different. The so disc which has a mass of 20 kg is subjected to a couple moment m. So the same moment where theta is in radians. If it starts from rest, determine its angular velocity. Hold on. I missed something, I missed something there. Yeah. Okay, so it's not right. If it starts from rest, so at t equals zero, mega equals zero, you go to find the time when the angular speed is 10 radians per second. Okay. Now, again, this is not a kinematic problem because of the mass given. So then the question is, what do you use? We're told to find angular speed as a function of time. Okay. So you think, well, let me use the principle of impulse and momentum, right? That's the first thing. I'll show you that that actually doesn't uh, help, doesn't work. So, FBD, you can draw that yourself, same as previous. If you use a uh, principle of impulse momentum, and why this is your this is your best guess is because you asked to find velocity as a function of time. So that says that uh, now this is going to be angular impulse and momentum, right? because we don't want to have the forces showing up in the equation at the pin joint. So if you do that, 
you have I O omega 1 plus the work done so not a work done M D T T1 to T2 equals I O omega 2 so that's the formula in the uh, impulse void uh, sorry, the angular void the initial angular momentum is I 1 omega 1 the final angular momentum is I O uh, omega 2 okay so when you try to do this what you get is right where m is given here now can, can you integrate this theta is a function of time you cannot integrate this so this is one of the cases which I mentioned there. If you find that, so once you have identified velocity as a function of time, if the external moment is a function of time, you can do this. That is, you can use this approach only if the external force is a function of time. So if m was given, for example, 2t plus 4, then you could have been able to do that integral. If, however, if it's, if it's not a function of time, if it's a function of position or velocity, m is a function of, in this case, m was a function of theta, which is a function of position, then you cannot use the, this principle, you could actually use the equation of motion. So just because it's a velocity, is a function of time, is what is asked, doesn't mean that you can use the principle of impulse momentum for a very specific case when the moment uh, is a function of distance or velocity. So, uh, effectively, this will not work. This will not work. So we have to go to f equals ma. We use equations. Okay, so yeah. Can you place in there the dt for um, theta or omega? If you use the uh, rigid body uh, the uh, equations. How will you replace dt? The uh, dt equals uh, d theta over omega. So that is not a valid formula because its omega is d t d theta dt. It's not dt is d, d theta divided by d omega. So you can't use you can't use this no. So you got to use the equation of motion, which basically is uh, the net moment is equal to I O alpha. The net moment is two theta plus four equals I O alpha. Again, you have two choices, D omega DT. And you have omega D omega D theta since since uh, this is theta, you're actually stuck using this. Okay, so what you got to do is uh, first find omega as a function of theta, okay, by integrating this by Rating this and then what you got to do is then you have to replace omega as d theta dt equals f theta and integrate to solve for theta as a new function of time and that's how you'll be able to solve it. Here, a couple of things I, I need to fill it up. I'll fill it up and, and post it. That is, how do you actually do these steps? Okay, I'm almost out of time. Two minutes more. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll fill this up later, but I had one more question and I will not solve it, but I'll just get it started and, 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 and solve it later on. So here is another problem. Determine the constant speed at which the cable A, 